is dead. Okay, so we're gonna hop into our first segment, but I do need to make a disclaimer because we're on YouTube. So, first of all, most YouTube people, the people watching this video, and to my federal agent, I I love you. I hope you take some days off. Um, we here at INN are not making any definitive statements about uh, vaccines or vaccine protocol or anything like that. Um, if you if you want to get vaccinated and feel protected, you have my blessing. Please do so. Um, all we are doing here is we are reflecting on real life events. And my my only big personal gripe with how uh, COVID was handled was focused on the information that was given to us. And um, we're only going to go by official sources here and kind of critique that. Um, but yeah, my sorry. My other gripe is how certain factions handled some of the policies surrounding COVID. But we are certainly not um, we are certainly not making any definitive statements on anything. Um, as always, you know, I'm not a doctor. Uh, Yeti, while super informative, I don't think is a doctor either. So at the end of the day, please consult your uh, medical professional who's paid off by big far <clears throat> sorry, uh, I had a bit of a hiccup there. I think it was a tech. Uh, consult your medical professional. Um, you know, for any actual advice on anything medical, that's what you should do. Go look mm -hmm. this stuff up. Go find the receipts. Do your own research. Or I, I guess you're not supposed to do your own research now. I can't remember. There's do not read things. any books ever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't read. You are not allowed to read. You will. You're going to jail. If you read a book, you're going to jail, basically. Pretty much. So. Uh, you start thinking for yourself. Huh? Uh, that's all over now. Looks like we got ourselves a reader. Mm -hmm, Bill Hicks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, without further ado, we're going to go into our first segment here. Um, this is just, I, I'm so cynical. This is funny at this point. Um, okay, so hold on. There's a new thing here. Let me click it. Oh, that's cool. Check that out. Oh, that's fucking sick. Okay. Um, all right. So without further ado... <laughs> Uh, let's go. So, revealed. Dr. Anthony Fauci convinced, confesses he made up COVID rules, including six feet social distancing, distancing and masking kids. Which, I've always been kind of, I don't know about you, I've always been kind of confused about that one, the six feet thing. Because, like, six feet is bad, but, like, seven feet is okay. Like, where... Where is that actual line? Yeah, like, where do you, where, what are you getting this from? Because, like, I remember when this first came into place, I, I tried to find any, like, literature, because I'm a bit of a medical nerd. I have, like, a Merck manual right over here. Um, I don't ever remember this at all being implemented for anything. Um, I don't remember it in any kind of literature. We've never done any of it before. Like, holy fuck. So, uh, bombshell testimony from Dr. Anthony Fauci reveals he made up the six-foot social distancing rule and other measures to protect, quote-unquote, Americans from COVID. Republicans put out the full transcript of their sit-down interview with Fauci from January, just days before his highly anticipated public testimony on Monday. They plan to grill him about COVID restrictions he put in place that he admitted didn't do much to slow the spread of the virus. Kids learning yeah, loss and social anything. No, they didn't do shit. Like, I mean, I remember yeah. this this was just Ontario, but I remember uh our our brilliant premier, who's who I can never say enough good things about our fucking premier, because I definitely don't I definitely don't fucking hate his guts. Um I do, I actually do. Um he had to like be like, guys, I'm sorry, but we got to lock down again after locking down the first, I think it was Christmas. I feel like that was what started the trucker thing. The fact that he was like, sorry, I know everybody's vaccinated and we already locked down multiple times, but we got to lock down again. <laughs> and everybody was like, okay, fuck. Like, none of this is working. Like, yeah, it's like, it, it's ridiculous because they, they kept trying to do the same thing over and over again and it's like you're clearly not getting anywhere yeah th like there's you're not like I, I don't 
I'm just saying, like, this stuff isn't working, so why are we still, like, dying on these hills? Like, mm-hmm. maybe try another strategy, or, I don't know, like, stop implementing these policies if they're not helping to begin with. Just, like, yeah. can we have some semblance of fucking, like, like some semblance of uh, consistency here? Or, like, God. Anyway. Kids' learning loss and social setbacks have been well documented with one National Institute of Health NIH study calling the impact of mask use on students' literacy and learning very negative. And the impacts from social distancing cause depression, generalized anxiety, acute stress, and intrusive thoughts, also known as what I go in in one hour of my waking life, uh, another NIH study found. Speaking to counsel on behalf of the House Select Subcommittee on the coronavirus, co- coronavirus pandemic earlier this year, Fauci told Republicans that the six-foot social distancing rule sort of just <laughs> sort of just appeared. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> and that he did not recall how it came about. You know, I don't recall. It sort of just appeared. <laughs> I just sort of started saying things and that's what happened. He's like, bro, I was just memeing, okay? I was just, you know, like, you know how it goes? You know, you're just on a, you know, you're like, (laughs) you do a good bump and then you, like, holy shit. He added he was not aware of studies that supported social distancing. (laughs) Like, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's just like, Look, guys, I didn't know what anything I was doing. He's I, literally I'm not even a doctor. <laughs> I, 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 I wrote in years ago, back of a comic book that gave me the doctor. People just kept believing me. I went with it. He's like, listen, I just, I, 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 I've been to Second City. Uh, <laughs> like, oh my god. Uh, conceding that such studies would be very difficult to do. I mean, they might be difficult to do, but do you think that maybe they would be needed for like anything at all? Maybe when you, before you implement something, for example, you might want to base it off anything other than like vi- he's, he's literally saying like I, you know, it's just vibes, bro. Like it's yeah. just vibes. Mm-hmm. In addition, well, it's, it's just so bad. In addition to not recalling any evidence supporting social distancing, Fauci also told the committee's counsel that he didn't remember reading anything to support them asking kids what prevent COVID. Oh my fucking god. It's you recall he viewing- a YouTube video. That's why he didn't read it. It was a YouTube video. Yeah. Do you recall reviewing any studies or data supporting masking for children? He was asked. I might I might have. <laughs> He responded before adding, but I don't recall specifically that I did. <sighs> the pandemic patriarch. Ooh, I like. I'm sorry. That's. I'm. A, I. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of a slut for alliteration. Um, that one. <laughs> pandemic patriarch. Also I do like good word choice. Yeah, that that's good. Also testified that he had not followed any studies after the fact regarding the impacts that forced mask wearing had on children, of which there have been many. And his answer was an ironic COVID-esque pun. I think that's still up in the air. (laughs) Fauci said about whether masking kids was a solid way to prevent transmission. And there's still there there's still like weird Twitter accounts with hammers and sickles that just like parrot masks work over and over again. We'll get into that later because that's a that's an axe I got to grind. But um, <clears throat> further, the former director director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases (NIAID) told the council that he believes the lab leak theory, the idea that COVID began at the Wuhan Institute of Virology (WIV) is a real possibility. I think people have made conspiracy aspects from it, adding, it could be a lab leak. So I think that in of itself isn't inherently a conspiracy theory, but some people spin off things that from that are, uh, some people spin off things from that are kind of crazy. Okay. I don't did know about ask him where the f- Did they ask him where the funding for the Wuhan lab came from by any chance? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I remember when the lab leak thing was a conspiracy theory. 
um, that we couldn't talk about. It's like, no, it totally came from a from a, from an elephant that uh, cast a magic missile into a bat, and the bat shit out uh, a smaller bat that coughed on like a penguin, and the penguin gave everybody COVID. Like, I remember when that was a thing, where they're just like, no, it couldn't have come from a lab. But yeah, where did the funding come from? And the reality is the funding came from the United States government. Mm-hmm. Um, because of course it did. Now, my question is, my big question, my huge question about this is um, why, and I don't, I don't recall a lot of people covering this. Why was the United States doing this kind of research in the country of their biggest rival? And yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm being intentional with the cynical tone I'm applying that with. Why were they doing deadly virus research in the country that is their greatest threat? The greatest threat to Western hegemony, the greatest threat to the Western world order. Why China of all places? Oh, it's probably because China doesn't have any rules or anything like that. That's what I've heard. China definitely doesn't have rules and stuff like that. I'll go on record by saying I think they did fuck up. I think that leaked and they didn't mean to leak it. I the scramble afterward definitely like kind of I feel like there was a massive fuck up factor when it came to COVID. I definitely That's, think that. I think here is probably a good point. I think there's I think they had been testing in other places before that as well. Possibly in the Denver, Colorado area. Uh, if you remember there was something called Vapor Lung that came about for a while. Exact same systems as COVID disappeared after about six months. Oh, was that I like never the heard of it. popcorn lung? Popcorn lung, right? The the yep. thing that you get from vaping that I've never gotten, even though I clearly well. And then they said vaping. it was. <laughs> then they said it was from uh, Chinese vapes because oh, they must yeah. make the, their liquid must be completely different because the three components there's vegetable glycerol, propylene glycol, and uh, flavoring and nicotine. Yeah, that's all that's it's, in. I mean, I've got the, I've got the ingredients right here. I can, I can show it. Like that's the ingredient. There's nothing crazy in this. It's just fucking like, it's it's yeah. the most simple. I, like compare that with your average pro like processed food from your grocery mm-hmm. store, where you look at the ingredients and it's five thousand things that you can't pronounce. Mm-hmm. This is just literally like three things. Yeah. I mean, surely inhaling anything is not good for you, per se. Of course. But it certainly has proven to be, my apologies, better than smoking. Uh, that's that's my reason for it. This this is the only thing that got me off cigarettes. I tried everything yeah, and, else. It didn't work. It's actually been around for quite a long time. It was originally, I think it was Japan, in the 80s or 90s, someone started learning about vaping, and it was to get his father off. Um, cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's helped me. I know it's obviously going to have, you know, it's not going to have the best consequences. It's it's not as good as just breathing oxygen, obviously, because yeah. your lungs are just meant to breathe in air. That's it. They're not meant to breathe in anything else. But, I mean, if you just look at, like, the comparison, it's like, okay, do you want to inhale, like, vegetable glycerin or propylene glycol? Or do you want to inhale, like, fucking rat poison and, and yeah. cyanide and... Burning <laughs> tar. You know, yeah. Some nice carcinogens. Ooh, thank you. Yeah, like, it's kind of a no-brainer. You're going for, like, a harm reduction policy, not a, like, eliminating harm sort of thing. But if the only other option is you're going to go back to smoking, fuck yeah. Vape it up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It would be vastly better than smoking. But yeah, the popcorn lung thing was weird because I was reading about that at the time while I was vaping. And I'm like, yeah. wait, what? what? What do you mean? That's 
I I can I I've been <laughs> like I've been vaping for a while and that doesn't happen. I don't get these symptoms. I don't get any symptoms. My sense of smell returned. Well, very rarely do people seem to. It's that's why it was very peculiar at the time. And at the time, I was vaping to get off cigarettes too. And so yep. I had basically. In order to get my mind to work on stuff, sometimes I just have to get so involved in it. So I learned everything about vaping. Yeah. And so no, I, like, it, when it came out, I was like, that's BS. Right? Like, Yeah. And it's like, it's weird seeing all these smear pieces because it's like, but I'm vaping. Anyone who's vaping is going to read this and know you're full of shit. It's mm-hmm. specific to certain flavoring agents. Earl of Laurel. That's a good point. Um, that that's entirely possible. Like, if there's some crazy shit in your vape juice, like, yeah, it's gonna fuck you up, right? But um, well, and there is always gonna be the risk. Something gets in it. Some people do add additives to cheapen it. But like, yeah, vegetable glycerol and PG are some of the cheapest things you can get. There's not yeah. much else you can throw in to cheapen it. Like, it's just basic like economics it's like there's not really anything you could do to make it cheaper so yeah that makes sense, right and also like i mean that makes sense when you're doing something like if you're making like mdma or something or like e mm-hmm. like that yeah. kind of makes sense because it's like okay well i'll put some like filler shit in because like i'll be able to make more of it and make more of a profit i get it um, but like with this shit, it's like, oh my god! Like the uh, like the cost on this is is yeah. borderline nothing. Yeah, like it was especially never expensive. Yeah, like it's it's nothing. So the risk of like you would have to be deliberately like, Mwahaha, I'm gonna put, mm. I don't know, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna put, uh, oh, what's the um. What's that poisoning thing Walter White uses in Breaking Bad? What is it? The I didn't actually watch a whole ton of that series, to be honest. The thing he uses to poison Lydia, I'm trying to remember. Uh, ricin. Yeah, someone's like, oh, I'm going to put ricin in your vape juice. And it's like, that's got to be like a, an intentionally malicious act and likely manslaughter. Yeah. So Yeah. Well, do you remember like the... Um... Uh, it was probably almost 20 years ago now. The Tylenol in the States, someone was putting ricin in some Tylenol bottles and people oh had died God. from it. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be like, that's like a freak occurrence. But the way they painted yeah. it, they tried to paint it like, if you vape, you're going to get popcorn lung and your your heart's going to, like, it was just. Yeah. It, Everyone's it, dying. Uh-huh. Wait, that sounds like COVID again. It's it like. Obviously, we can't prove this, but like it reeked of like big tobacco, just like Mm -hmm. spent a bunch of money to run like a smear piece on vaping so they could scare people back into buying their cigarettes. That's all it sounds that's all felt like to me, at least. No, I think you're correct on that for sure, though. It's it really was like just fear mongering. And I, I still talk to like real life friends of mine who are like, yeah, I really want to get off smoking, but like the popcorn lung. And I'm like, yeah, but the popcorn lung is kind of bullshit. And they're like, no, no, it's not. And I'm like, yes, I'm right and you're wrong. Just shut up. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, popcorn well, lung popcorn was discovered. Lung, oh, popcorn lung was discovered at a popcorn factory. The butter flavor becomes toxic mm-hmm. when it gets too hot. Interesting. Yeah. And, and so there's PG in the butter flavoring that's where the uh, connection actually came in that's why they were able to connect the two right but it's basically kind of bs right so thank you earl of laurel thank you my dude um okay let's continue the coronavirus committee has dedicated months discovering the origins of the virus that upended so many lives and resulted in the deaths of six million people globally recently they have discovered that fauci's taught a former top aide doctor david morenz routinely conducted work on his personal email account and deleted files to avoid government transparency laws under the freedom of information act is disregard oh, disregard hello, for, Hillary. Yep. His disregard for FOIA 
request was so blatant that he bragged in emails to colleagues that he learned how to make official correspondence disappear and that he would delete things he didn't want to see in the New York Times. Emails from Morin's uh, uncovered by the committee further revealed that he boasted about having a secret back channel to Fauci where where he could clandestinely communicate with the former NIAID director. That revelation shocked the committee's chairman, Brad Wenstrup, our Ohio, Republican Ohio, so thoroughly that he demanded Fauci turn over his personal email and phone records to the investigative body. Also shocking is Fauci's admission to the committee in January that he never looks at the grants that he signed off on, some of which total to millions of taxpayer dollars. You know, technically, I sign off on each council, but I don't see the grants and what they are. I never look at what grants are there, he told the committee's council. Further, he said he was not certain that foreign labs that receive U.S. grant money, such as the WIV, which was studying coronaviruses using U.S. taxpayer dollars at the time the t- pandemic began, operate at the same standards of American labs. Fauci also said that the money he gave out as part of the NIAID grant process did not go through any national... Sorry. Did not go any, through any national security, security reviews. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. Look, guys. We did absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's what I'm here to say. Listen, this virus went out and we just said fuck it and just day drank. Like, we had cocktail parties and ice cream fridges. Listen, we just played a lot of Goldeneye. And as I'm Dr. Fauci, obviously I had to play Odd Job. Um, he would play Odd Job for sure. It's fair. But- Additionally, the former director said he was unaware of any conflicts of interest among his staff, which included the senior advisor, Dr. Morins. However, Morins testified b- before the committee on May 22nd that he helped his best friend, Eco Health Alliance president, Dr. Peter Daszak, with his nonprofit's work. Morins said he helped edit press releases for Eco Health and worked to restore grant funding for the nonprofit after its funding was terminated in the wake of the COVID outbreak in 2020. NIH, which employs Morins, funded Daszak's Eco Health to the tune of millions of dollars. Still, Fauci said he was unaware that Morins had any conflicts of interest. The committee will surely seek to clarify Fauci and Morins' secret back channel, wink, sorry, I had to, of communication during the June 3rd hearing. So, like, <clears throat> it, it would yeah, be one of those yeah. double wink situations. Just, sir, you just yeah. blinked at me. Yeah. So, that's how down bad we are with the. Uh, with how our our institutions handled the COVID thing. And I mean, look, at the end of the day, like we need to criticize this shit because mm-hmm. I don't want this shit happening the next time we have a pandemic where all of our leaders and institutional bodies are just fucking winging it. Where they're just like, yeah, YOLO, uh, six feet, uh, six feet. Maybe we'll try like five feet distancing. And, um, maybe we'll like put the mask on your head. You can wear the mask on your head. So the virus doesn't go into your hair. Like I, I don't want to go through this bullshit again, because as you saw in the article, like these aren't consequenceless. Having these policies affects real working class people. It affects people and actually kind of fucks them over. So if we're going to make sacrifices, can we at least make them based on like real world fucking things? Can we at least base them on shit that makes sense instead Mm -hmm. of just like winging it and being like, well, maybe this will work. I don't know. Let's give it a shot. 